Hi, so at the end of a previous video, that was the video on making an artificial rubber, a rubber replacement from casein and sulfur, I chucked some graphite into the actual mix to make a rubberized ink, just because that's the kind of thing I'm interested in, and this was it. Now it had some really interesting properties, the first being it sticks to plastic really, really well, so it sticks to plastic and it's really flexible, so you can bend it at kind of very, very acute angles, it won't come off. Now the one drawback with it was that <laughs> resistance is really high, it's about two kilo ohms, and that makes it pretty much useless actually as a conductive ink. It's a reasonable resistive ink, but there's not that much you could do with it. So I said at the end of the video I'd do some work on that and um, get it to a much, much lower resistance if I could, because the, I want a rubberized ink for various reasons, like heated clothing, for instance, or a flexible EMI shielding, or EMI shielding to paint on plastic, so it would go into computers, that kind of thing. So I've been looking for something like this, so I decided to do some extra work on it. Now, the extra work that I did on it was to put some graphene in there. Now, I make all my own graphene, and this is it. It's a fairly concentrated solution. It's about five grams a litre, so it's pretty concentrated. Now, I make it off my own use, because it all goes into the inks, and I don't really sell, sell any of it. Now, I used that on this ink, and I made up a litre and a half of this flexible rubber ink, and then I stuck it through the three-roll mill, which is this thing here. This is the thing that the Indiegogo campaign helped me buy. So I put it through the three-roll mill, and then I put it in a vacuum to degas it. And so what we got was this. So I've painted it now onto another piece of plastic, and it has the same qualities, amazing flexibility, but the conductivity has changed. Now I'm going to do a square conductance, and that is where the distance between the plates is the same as the distance across, to give me an estimate of this. I know that other people tell me that there are better ways of doing it, and there certainly are, and if I had the equipment, I'd do it the better way. But this gives me a good guide, and that meter reading is actually on kilo ohms. So if I connect that, you can see that it's 55 ohms, or 0 0.055 kilo ohms. Now if I give that a good press, then that will go down, but just held against it, it's 55 ohms. So it's come down from 2 kilo ohms to 55 ohms by adding 5% of graphene into it and putting it through the three roll mill. So we've got a huge Just taking your resistance reading actually doesn't help us very much because what we need to know really is how thick that film is. Now what I've got here is a paint film thickness meter. It's meant for measuring the thickness of paint films on cars. Now it won't go less than one micron, so there's a fair degree of error in there, but it will certainly give us an idea of what kind of resistance we're getting out of this thing. So the first thing to do is to measure the thickness of the film and the plastic together, because the ink doesn't settle into the plastic, it lays on top of the plastic. So we measure the film and the plastic together, then we get 81 microns. So the two films are 81 microns. Now we just move it and measure the thickness of the plastic. And if we measure the thickness of the plastic, we get 78 microns. So that tells us that that paint film is three microns thick. So we've got a three micron thick paint film with a resistance of 55 ohms. Now, paint films are always quoted per mil and per mil is 25 microns. So our reading was at three microns and we have to normalize it so we get some kind of measure so we can compare it to all the other stuff on the market. Now the way you normalize it is divide by 25 and multiply by three and that makes sense because as this thing gets thicker, the resistance should go down. So if we take 55 divided by five and multiply by three, what we get is 6.6. .6. So the normalized resistance of that film is 6.6 .6 ohms per mil per square. That's pretty cool. Now, 6.6 .6 ohms per square brings that in line with just about every other um, commercially available paint. Actually, it's better than every other commercially available paint. And it has some really other good qualities about it. One of them, like I say, it sticks to plastic, on you wouldn't believe. It's very, very flexible. So we can do that with it, and that's kind of very cool as well. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So what we have here now is a rubber, flexible, low resistance ink that will go onto plastic. Of course, I've shown you how to make this stuff. If you go back to the video on the um, rubberized milk, you'll see exactly how I made it. Couple it with this, adding the graphene, and you're there. So what we've got here is a paint that has a 
no pectin, no volatile organic contents. It's made out of renewable biopolymer. It's water soluble. It's made out of only three things. Uh, four, if you include the water. It's made out of water, milk, carbon, and a little bit of sulfur. You probably can't get more innocuous than that. So that's pretty safe. But obviously, I need to have it safety tested before I can um, sell it. I can't sell it without doing the safety testing on it first. But it's pretty exciting. Uh, one other really good property that it has, incidentally, if I wet my finger and rub it on, it's waterproof. So <laughs> we have a huge amount of really good qualities for this ink. Now, I want it because uh, I'm looking at making flexible heated clothing. But with those kind of qualities, the chances are this will make a really good EMI shielding paint. Now we have had one of our paints tested for EMI shielding and it has superb results. In certain ranges of frequencies, it's actually better than one millimeter thick aluminium in terms of its shielding. So I think the next thing to do really with this is send it off for EMI shielding and also um, construct some flexible heating wraps with it so we can look at making that flexible and heating. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. I thought I'd give you an update and thank you very much for watching.